Good afternoon. We are live here from the Steppers capital of the world in Chicago. How are you? I'm Reggie Miles, and I'm welcoming you to the Friday edition of this program called Conversations. You might as well reach out and tell somebody what's about to happen because we're going to have a great conversation today with the stepping legend, stepping legend and a promoter. And it's a lady. Okay, so don't get on me about having an all-man thing because we're getting ready to spice this thing up, and it's going to be nice. Marjette Coleman is my guest today, and I hope you stick around and stay for the next, well, we don't know how long we're going to go, but I'm just going to say an hour for right now. But I want you to stick around for what we do on this program called Conversations. I'm Reggie Miles, and stay with us. The interview is coming next. I'm so glad you could make it. Sit down, sit down. Oh, yeah. Oh, the band is going to be awesome tonight. I dig it. Here we are inside this place that we call Conversations, and I'm just excited that I can be with you today. My very special guest really needs no introduction, well, except to me, because she was here when I was gone, but let's bring her up, Marjette. Hey, Reggie. I want you to sit down and talk on Conversations. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. You know, I'm just glad that I've got this opportunity to have a lady to talk with on Friday because I've been doing like this men thing. And that's already talking. You think anybody, nobody's stepping. You think just the men be stepping out of time. But no, yeah. we, we want to get the ladies in. But I started off right, really. I had two great ladies, and uh, I had Sharnice and I had Maddie B, and now I have my. Okay. Listen, so. You came into the game just as I was. Well, I won't say that because you've been in the game. Or when I say game, I mean you've been dancing. We've yeah. been dancing a long time. Okay. Yeah. And I know I saw you out on set, but I guess I didn't. I don't know why I didn't ask you to dance because you <laughs> you won bad motor scooter. I was laid back. <laughs> just <laughs> laid back taking everything out. Yes, yes. So listen, I want you to give us the summation of what you've done or a, a actuality. Tell us where you began and where did you begin in what we call our dance stepping? Well, I can say I moved back to Chicago when I was 15 and I happened to go to a stepper's, no, I wouldn't say stepper. I'll say a party. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, I was 15 and 75 at the Ridgeland on Thanksgiving night. Okay. And that was the first time that I really actually laid my eyes on stepping. Wow. In full effect. What did you think? What did you feel? What was your reaction? 
I fell in love. I can remember <laughs> when I really fell in love was that night. Um, there was a couple that was walking. I can remember clearly that the woman had blonde hair. She had a little hat on and they were dancing off a stairway to heaven. Mm. And they were so smooth. And from that night on, every day after school, my uncle and his friends had me learning how to step so they could have someone to take with them to parties. So um, that's when I really got started. So 1975. I think Sam Chapman was the DJ or either cousin, cousin Danny. Uh, I really can't remember, but like I said, it was at the original. Okay, if that was a yeah. Sam set, Sam set, it was definitely, mm -hmm. it was definitely either him. Well, he he was spinning or cause cousin Danny could have been terrible Ted, but so what did you think of the music when you were in in the place? I mean, what was the atmosphere like for you? It was just laid back. Um, you know, I'm young back then. All I liked was love, love music, slow songs anyway. You know, I mean, we had the dramatics, the Dales, and you had your OJs. Uh, I was just into the music back then. So to see that being done with it, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was something that just took me away. So um, for a hot minute, I got tired of trying to learn. But then some said, keep on going. You were almost there. You know, every day it was like a drill. Uh, my uncle and, like I said, the guys in the neighborhood, they would come over every day after school. Before my homework was being done, I had to learn how to step. Okay. okay. Yeah. Who were some of the early instructors for you? Well, we, we I didn't have an instructor. Like I said, it was my uh, uncle. May he rest in, may he rest. I mean, everything we did was, you know, it was it was an account. You just learn how to do the steps, and that was it. Uh, one on one, to the point where I left them behind. Okay. You know, we would go. To, yeah, we would go to parties. Um, something like uh, what was it? The salon that was on Eighty Third in Cottage Grove, mm -hmm. and it was very few women that was really stepping. So it was like I was doing a birthday dance every time I got on the floor. <laughs> Somebody, it was like five or six guys that was lined up to get a step in. So that's how I learned how to really step. I mean, it was one after another, you know, and I was always able to keep up with whoever got on the floor. And that was how I wrote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it was you saying that it was. Less ladies out there when you came when you when you were out there. I wonder what well, I, yeah. I wonder well, what seeing that I was on mm -hmm. the scene that I was going to. I mean, together, mm -hmm. you were Bob, weren't stepping. So basically, uh, the few women that the girls that did come out because we was girls. Right. You know, I mean, maybe they could come out like they wanted them to. So, like I said, my uncle and his friends secured them some dancers because they taught us how to dance. Mm -hmm. So, and then when they, you know, when they get, got on the floor with me, then somebody else wanted some and they let them, they turned me and I'd come to them. And as I kept doing that, I got a little better with it, you know. I was able to keep up with most of them, you know. So in your in some so in your early days you was a, you a you were a birthday dancer. <laughs> every every dance was like a birthday <laughs> dance for y'all now. Yeah, yeah, it was. It really was. It really was until uh, I got I say once I got about twenty, mm -hmm. a twenty one. That's when I started going to the adult sets, and then I learned to smooth my game out, and I guess that's when I learned how to step. Okay. Because originally I was bopping. Okay. And I got smooth, which is it, all it was was just slowing it down a little bit, and 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 changing the style. It wasn't the steps; it was just the style of it that mm -hmm. I changed. You know, um, I guess that's when I became a butterfly. Okay. You know, spreading my wings and 
you know, then the guys were older. They were, you know, they knew how to just take you and sweep you off your feet. And, you know, that's what was happening. Mm. So I had graduated. <laughs> right. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm seeing that you, you had some time in the dungeon. Not really. I'm not going to say I was one of the dungeon people. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I went a few times, but that's not how I roll. Uh, while some people were at the, most people say they were at the dungeon, I was probably at the Tiger Lounge mm. or the, oh. the Gravity. Uh, it was so many other places that I was moving around to. Like I said, I was hanging with my uncle, so they was always moving around. Now, my little sister went to the dungeon. Okay. Um, and my uncles went, but I was always doing something different. Um, you had the Sheba. You had, uh, for me, um, I don't know if you heard me say the Gravity. That was a place that was on 87 in Cottage Grove. Okay. Uh, what else? I said the Salon, the Tigers, and uh, the, the Presidents. 75th Street. Yeah. So, I mean, I came up on 79th. I went okay. to Hirsch. Um, I lived on AEF and Drexel. Uh, my parents, my grandparents had bought a building over there since 1957. So they were practically the first black that were over there. So my family has been over that way all, you know, so I rolled up and down 79th Street, the south side, of, uh, east side of Chicago, you know, uh, went to End of the Rainbow. You know, I was, I was just moving around. So to say that I was doing that time, but I just didn't roll that much to the dungeon. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Cause one of the things that like, I want to uh, emphasize and let people know that all steppers or people that are dancing in the social partner dance in Chicago, Chicago, that culture, everybody didn't come from the same place. Yeah. And we, we had, we, there were various places that we came from. And I think uh, that lounge era was really, really strong. Mm -hmm. that, you know, because you had the road runner El Panama, you know, uh, oh, wow. guys and gals. We had places all up a uh, uh, Halsey on 79th Street, yep. 7th. And so that's a good thing. And it was one thing, and I mentioned this, that in every time there was, you know, if you went to a club, when I went to, to let's say, the El Matador 50-yard line, there was a guy in there. Right. His name was Ivory. He passed the uh, rest of the I remember time. Ivory. You I remember, remember him. him? Yeah, you know, I do. So nobody could outdance him at the 50, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I remember Ivory. I remember yeah. him. Every, he rest yeah, everybody yeah. had that thing. So... In some of the places, some of the guys that you were coming up with, do you remember any of the specific names in the early formative years that you might consider uh, that were a good dancer for you? Some of the early people that you might remember, the guys that were dancing with you at that time. Um, oh, some of everybody. Uh, George Macaroni. Bingo. Uh, yeah, may he rest in peace. Um, ooh. Now, Ty Skippy was around, but I didn't dance with him because mm -hmm. we had two different styles. I have to admit that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in high school, he came out a year after me, I believe. But, okay. you know, uh, my uncle Tyrone Powell, mm -hmm. I really wouldn't know him because no sooner than we got out of high school, he went to the military and, oh, there was people, Kala. I don't know if anybody knows him, but these people were people that didn't hang on the set. Okay. They were, they just moved around. So, um, ooh, now you, we can go back to the copper box. I just danced with everybody. Okay. I mean, not anybody, not anybody, but everybody that really can just go. Okay. Now I need you to, I just need you to, uh, to get on to to co come in and tell me more about that because see people don't believe me when I tell them that in order to dance you had the ladies had to see you dance and because right. the ladies weren't going to embarrass themselves so what was the criteria for you to dance with a guy back in the day? Well, basically, most of my knew so the ones that were coming to ask me. 
Mm-hmm. And by the time I'm finished with them, I'm be tired anyway. So it would be easy. I mean, every once in a while, somebody might ask me to step or dance with them. If, if I didn't know them and I didn't think they, you know, I wouldn't just turn them down because I'm thinking they couldn't step. But mm-hmm. I basically would say, you know, I just got off the floor. <laughs> and then later on, if I see them step, then, you know, like, you know, maybe they might come back and ask me. You know, uh, I might walk past and give them a little like, okay, you ready? <laughs> you know, I put it to I put it to them like, well, not to embarrass them or make them feel bad. You, you know, yeah. I would always be nice about how I did it. I never thought that I was better than the next person or anything. I just was being nice enough to say, well, you know what? I'm tired. I just got off the floor. My knees hurt. My feet hurt or yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> So you let us down easy, huh? Yeah, you know, you don't want to mess up nobody's ego. (laughs) (laughs) That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always was compassionate about whatever I did do. You know, I always thought about somebody else's feelings before. If, uh, you know, just let them down easy. Because sometimes people take it in another direction. You never know what that person's day was. You know, I always consider that how their day was before you got to them. Or they, you know, just never know. So I've always been that type of person where I just let a person down easy or... Okay, uh, let's hold on and let's hope we still got this connection. And because uh, it looks like she's froze, so we're gonna we're gonna hold on, and uh, we're gonna stay here, and she might have to go back out and come back in. But we're talking to Marjette Coleman, and she's a wonderful dancer. Uh, did start learning the dance in 1975, and uh, some of the things like she's been telling me about it is some of the things that kind of like kind of like went through. I saw her on set, you know, and I didn't get a chance to like to dance with her or maybe I might have danced with her and forgot. I don't know. But uh, when the time when she did, she's going to have to go out and come back in. The time when she did uh, come in and we're going to show the one of her videos. We're going to show the video of her dancing with, uh, with the legendary Daryl Davis, who we had on last week. Uh, the times that she did come into prom, uh, prominence, you know, on set, I was gone. Okay, so while we're waiting for her to get back, let me tell you some of the things that, some of the lingo. All right, when I say on set, I'm talking about dancing. Because it's like a lot of things I'm trying, I'm going to try to get away from, you know, because I don't want, I don't want the young people or the, 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 the dancers today to feel like that. What's this old man coming out here talking about? I'm not trying to alienate. I'm actually trying to get closer to you. And I just want to just tell you some things. While I'm learning about you, I want to tell you about the things that, that you don't know. And, and that's not to put you down. But that's just to say that uh, this stuff didn't just start. It didn't start... Uh, in the 90s it didn't start in the 2000s this stuff has been going on since the 40s you know and i don't have anything you know my knowledge uh starts in the you know with the with the 60s um i don't know much and i don't have any information i wasn't there with what my mother and brother and the elders in my family what they were doing I myself, like uh, Margette, like Miss Coleman, I learned to dance from family, okay? And then watching others you know, in the dance, I learned to do the dance better. And probably the proving ground for me, the initial proving ground for me, when I really got involved with social partner dancing was in high school. So I'm hoping Margette, Margette she kind of hurries up and come on back so we can get here and finish talking about it. I did get out, I went out today and shared some time with some friends. I saw uh, Lionel Tally Fish, one of the great steppers. Uh, I saw him today. And uh, I really want to reach out and talk uh, this weekend. This weekend, this Sunday, I spent a little time with uh, Sharnice Simmons, 
with her class and I was dancing uh, with some of the students there. And I, I was actually, I was spinning too. And I actually just started clowning. I just actually just started cra acting crazy. You know, I had, we were have that was a set like back in the old days where we just started having fun. You know, uh, nobody was trying to uh, do anything different or it's crazy, but we were just having fun. Margette is back. How you doing? You I had, to, go, had so, to change rooms. I was oh. in the basement, so that's probably where the problem was. Oh, okay. And then, okay, the connection messed up. Well, I'm glad to see you back. Cause I was, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just start telling my story all the time. You know, people get a little bit. I, mean, I want to, you know, I want to talk about you. you know, okay. uh, I want to thank. I got to thank all my producers. I got to thank the people that are involved. Okay, uh, Black Man Willie Bell, uh, Step Papa Paparazzi, uh, one of the people I I truly re respect. Uh, Earl Williamson. Another one of the consultants, and of course, uh, Leanna Miles, boss, she's one as well. And then, of course, my executive producer, Miss Rachel Knight. Uh, I have to thank them and say it publicly because they helped to make this program GO, and that is go. And I appreciate that, and I appreciate them as well. Listen, there are a lot of more things we have that will be coming your way. Uh, and before I take my little break, to retool. I got some more things to really do to make this thing better. Margette, let's get back to you. I forgot where we left off at or where we were. Do you remember where the last thing we said? Because you know, you, know, you got to help me out. Yeah, I'm almost old as you. Look at that. <laughs> young girl, don't be talking about you almost as old as me. Okay, I, 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 know, I know we uh we uh we were talk we were just talking about well let's just go into the social clubs and what social club or what parties did you go to uh when you hit your twenties when you hit your stride uh in the dance um oh yeah and you were realizing that in your dance you was really realizing you were a bopper and but then you started stepping so where was one of the first places that you started to step at? Okay. It was at the Copper Box, the original old timers stepper set on the first Sunday with Yvonne Paramore, Black Mary, uh, Big Leg Lulu, and Sandra Swain. Woo! Big Leg Lulu. Yeah. Huh? Now, you know, I might have seen you in that set too myself, but you know, mm -hmm. I, was, I was probably in another world, you know. Yeah, we all. I was in another world, you know. But definitely, I definitely went to that. If I wasn't working, I was at mm -hmm. that first Sunday set. And that was I, I love that set. Yes, yes. That I, was the set. That was the set. Every first Sunday, I'll be shopping for my outfit the whole month just so I can look like a grown woman. <laughs> look like a real lady, you know. And, um, that was where I really learned how to step and be smooth. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys, they would take me and make me slow step. I mean, just, they were like, slow down. Slow by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cut yeah. that time in half. Yeah. Yeah. They take, took that little bounce out and it was like, slow. I, I mean, it's one guy, He his name was Milton. I couldn't tell you his last name, mm -hmm. but I have to give him credit. He slowed me down to where it was like I was walking. Mm -hmm. It was floating just like I was on some skates. What else did you really like uh, about that old timer set? I mean, I loved it in the copper box. I loved it there. Um, the, the I guess that lighted floor and the way the disco uh, mm -hmm. was, and but it really, it, you know, it was a really different atmosphere. Everybody yeah. in, there, of course, were clean, we were clean. clean. They were friendly, friendly. Um, nobody was stuck up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my godmother Yvonne Paramore, she just really took me up under her wing, and she taught me how to be. Kind of people. Okay. Uh, I already knew that, but it 
that kind of, she kind of groomed me, me watching her prepared me for something I never knew was coming, which was being a promoter into the stepping game. Okay. That's good. And years later, but being close to her, she always was courteous, um, socialized with everybody. She just didn't walk around and not talk. She was always in conversation with somebody smiling and treating them, you know, real nice. Well, that's one of the things that she did share is that mm -hmm. you know, that social club was not only did they were hosts and hostesses in their own set, but they, mm -hmm. would, they would still be go out plugging if there were yeah. any other sets going on. They would still go seeing somebody, see somebody at mm -hmm. their set or whatever was going on because they always say, uh, uh, well, Black Mary always says that there's always a stepper set, sometimes two or three going mm -hmm. on every day Yeah, here, yep. here in Chicago. Yeah. And a lot of times I would take Yvonne to different places, just like you said, um, going out, she had to promote. So mm -hmm. I learned a lot from that, you know. Now, okay, well, let's... Uh... I'm hoping that well I I was hoping I'd have a surprise for you so we can still keep keep our fingers crossed with that surprise but I want to and we'll come back to how the social club culture Oh wait a minute well no let's stay here let's stay right here in that copper box set um what were kind of some of the things that you like notice in the set then that don't happen now i mean like for example did the guys wear hats on the dance floor what did the guys do did they how did how did they uh were hats worn on the dance floor and the copper box uh Never. Did, did the guys uh when they asked the lady to dance did they let them walk off the floor by themselves or did did the guys walk them back to their seats? How, what was that type of dynamic? How were, how were the couples or the participants in the, in the sets? How were we treating each other? Well, like you said, um, the men would come up to you and ask you to dance. And then if you accept it, then they take you to the dance floor. You get your dance on. And then after that, he'll let you walk off first. He'll be right behind you. And then, you know, I'm not going to say you got took him back to because you might have went way in the back of the, you know, mm -hmm. but at least made sure you got off the floor mm -hmm. and, and, and you go your way unless it was somebody you was with. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, no hats were worn on the floor, period. Not mm -hmm. even on the nights when they did boogie or disco or whatever it was we was doing. So never that. No hats. All right, so uh, some of our comments right now coming from my uh, friend and colleague in D.C. He's saying hello to you. Oh, um, tell me. Founders yeah. of D.C. And, of course, uh, the executive producer, Rachel Knight, is welcoming you here. Hi, Rachel. And then a black, hey. man, black man, <laughs> Willie Bell. Hey, uh, Willie Bell. One of my brain trusts, you know, I call, mm. I just call Willie Bell and just, just cuss him out, you know. Yeah, and we just, Willie always on, he on point. He always had the right picture. <laughs> he is the cameraman. <laughs> yeah, Willie, Willie has done, do, has, has done some great things, and mm. of course, uh, DJ, e. yeah, E.T. Taylor. Yeah, E.T. was one of my uh, DJs for Three Gs when we did our uh, long run on Tuesday nights. Me okay. and Daryl had a step with it. Millennium Two Thousand production. Yeah, E.T. was with us for about five, six years. Then Mellow Chris had the other years. Matter of fact, E.T. was probably with us longer. Well, anyway, he had both of uh, both you great. Get, you can't get uh, a better person, you know. Mm. You, you know. He's paid, paid his played his dues, and he's yeah. he's one of the most versatile jocks. That yeah, on the set he can play when you yeah when he can play he can do the he can do the mixing and he, you know and but when it comes to playing some walking music he can he can drop some yeah music. yep he can yeah so you good, know good I'm, man good man yes I'm very proud to be associated mm -hmm. with him yeah he knows me. 
Okay, so we got some by, uh, and I'm glad I know him, Angela So Sister Smith. She's saying, "Hey, She's hey, saying, hey body. How and, you doing?" Uh, Cynthia uh, Whitman and she's Whitman. That's saying, yeah, my Whitman. oh, that's my sister right there. That's my okay. big sister. Yeah, right. talking to the queen of stepping. Yeah. Look, look at that. That look at that. And DJ Eric. Eric E.T., he appreciates all the kind words. Uh, Monday, you're listening to Conversations with the Reggie Miles, with Professor Reggie Miles, and my guest today is my Jet Coleman, and we're going to talk about her dancing. I got to play this, and I was hoping I could get a couple of calls, but we'll work things out. We'll take our time with that. We'll take our time. Hopefully, uh, my guests will call in, and as I bring this next video up, so we'll just share the screen and look at what we've got. And I want you to tell me your version of the 1997 dance with Derek <laughs> Now, I heard his version last week, but now I want to hear your version of this 1997 dance at Navy Pier. And I'm going to say it. This is the dance where you got it. Danced out of your shoe. <laughs> and so you got to tell me how you recovered from that. And then we're going to also talk about the differences between uh, social dancing and contest dancing. Okay. okay. We, got, we definitely got to bring that out. So let's, yeah. uh, let me share this screen. Let me see if I can get this up here. And I'm going to turn the music down so we don't have to... Uh, so I won't get into no rights type of thing with those okay. people. Oh, there it is. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. That you that you see that? So, a long time ago. Uh-huh. Oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. You probably still got the moves. All right. So I'm gonna just get here and press this button and see how we can get make this thing go. All right, here you go, Reggie Miles. Make it go. All right, I turned it down a little bit. Now, this is what's going to get me. See, I died when y'all did that. That killed me. Yeah, that, that killed me. And then now you're going to raise that hand up again. Oh, look at this here. And then uh, I was dead. I died twice. Now, that was the only move that we practiced. We didn't even practice. We threw our hands up and somebody said, that's it. That's all y'all got to do. And that was it. I think we practiced, well, we didn't really need practice, but I think we only danced, practiced about 10 minutes. And we did some with our hands, and that was Larry Baldwin at a park. And we was at the park district. He was teaching a class. And uh, we were practicing, like I said, doing whatever. And we just did that move, and he was like, that's the move. And we stopped. We didn't do no more until that night. Yeah, so I mean that was Andrea and uh, oh, Oz. I, I, I went to church with Oz, his family. They were yeah. jamming. They were jamming. Yeah. That go to shoe. <laughs> Stayed on your toes. Look at this. <laughs> Daryl tried to get that shoe to me to put on. I'm looking at him like, you know, I know I'm not going to get the shoe on. That's what made me say, keep the shoe out the way and keep on going. Man, you held your head and, up. I look at this girl holding her head up. Who you think? What's up with that? That came from oh, yeah. Calvin Barnes. Mm -hmm. Calvin Barnes told me about keeping my head up. He yeah. up. They keep your head up when I would dance for him. Oh, to be young again. 
But then on um, second thought, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Look at that. And with no shoe on, with just one shoe on. Oh, what I really liked about that was everything we danced to that evening was straight music. There was no singing or anything in it. We had to pick two songs, um, and that was Ain't That a Groove and Whistle Walk. And then yeah. Mellow Chris came right in with that, 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 that the middle song, Mellow Chris came in with that. Yeah, that's, that's the groove. And one of the things that uh, the young, the, the newer people on set, they have, you know, that's that, that's kind of taxing for them to dance off of that song. Mm -hmm. Look at that boy. Straight up smooth. Girl almost made me holler. <laughs> Look at him go. Let me tell you the funny story. When this video first came out, it was years uh -huh. later. I just happened to look on my Facebook page and I mean, literally, I had just woke up. I hadn't even got my head up off the, off the pillow. And I went to my phone, and I turned on Facebook, and I seen us. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what the? And I I paid, looked at it, and when girls started going down and doing whatever, I hollered. Yeah. And I was like, well, where did this come from? So it was years later when I seen this video. Wow. Yeah. So what was your what was your first uh, reaction again when you saw this video? I I I was in shock. I was like, where did this come from? <laughs> I mean, it's been out probably about a good five or six years, maybe not even that long. But that was the first time I'd seen it since um we danced. So I when it surfaced, it I don't know who I think it was I wanna oh, say parents of um uh, Hold on, man. Uh, I hate when that thing does that. Not a second or another minute. Although I do love smoking. Over hey. I'm through with the video. Good. Yeah, we, can go, we can go to church, too. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. That, that, is, that is awesome. Still okay. here. Still so, here. So now, that dance, what was some of, uh, what made, because Daryl said that night you all took the cake. Yeah. You were the winners that night. And yeah. so what made that dance with you and Daryl special that evening? What do you think? What was so special? What made it special? Other than the hand thing, because that killed me. You know, I, I mean, if I was a judge, you won right on that alone. Well, I had went to thank a judge. You know, I was thanking, you know, and he was like, you ain't got to thank me. You dance. You kept on dancing when that shoe uh -huh. came up. Mm -hmm. So um, that might have been probably the highlight. I mean, I had no clue I was going to lose a shoe, but I knew the next thing was that the show didn't stop. So I had to keep on going and I had to prop my foot up to like I had a heel on. So I kept on going and didn't lose a beat. I mean, probably the people behind, you know, the people in the front probably couldn't see the shoe came off. But clearly the ones in the front seen it. So, and I hope I didn't hit nobody. They tell me I, I didn't, kicked it. I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it until Daryl told me about it. I looked at it because I was so busy watching him do that front slide, man, and working his yeah. hand. And I, was, yeah. I, was, I was dead. He killed me with that. So I didn't yeah. even see the shoe come off. But uh, he did say when the... Uh, when the person got the shoe, they held it up. And that, and <laughs> folks saw it and they made me, ah! oh, Cinderella. <laughs> yeah, folks, folks started screaming and hollering. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. We had so, another contest that we were in. Um, actually, the first contest that Angie Fame had, and we won. I think she had that um, in age category or. 
old school, new school. Well, we won the old school. And of course, we danced off of Ain't, Ain't That a Groove. Mm-hmm. And we started off bopping, but then we did the slow step. And when we oh. did the slow step, we brought the house down. Yeah, because Daryl, he can he can do that slow bop. He, mm-hmm. can, he can lock that, and it really looks good. Yeah, it really yeah. looks good. Yeah. Uh, and doing this dance, and doing and doing this dance, uh, again, you probably dance with a lot of great guys. But one of one of the lady steppers talked to me, and she told me that there's always that one somebody that that you have a different type of click. You, you know, when you dance, it's just a, the vibe is just there from all, you know, all of it. Every, every other vibe is a lot of vibes, but when you find this one person, that vibe, it just intensifies. Well, what guy, or maybe what two guys or whatever, you know, you really felt a special vibe with when you were dancing. I have to say Herc is one. Step and Herc. Um, of course, the partners that I had. Um, Daryl. Okay. It's a few. Uh, George Macaroni. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a few of them. Uh, I know I'm missing somebody. Well, uh, you don't, my, uh Terrence Alexander. Uh-huh. Um, actually I won V one on three and Isaac Bush. I came in second place with Terrence Alexander. Mm-hmm. Uh what was that? 91, 92. Whenever the second year they had the contest, the year that Cynthia Shanks and Greg Adro won first. Yeah, that was that was year yeah. three. It was year yeah. Three. yeah. Okay, and then me and Terrence came in second place. Wow. That was yeah. Yeah, I was at that one, so y'all did jam on that one. But uh, just, just uh, you know, you dance with Daryl Herc and Big George, man. Them, is, Terrence, I mean, them will, them will kill us. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Keith Hubbard, I was probably his first original contest partner. He froze on me that night, but after that, he got the next time he danced, he won second place, and then he got with Angie, he just took on off. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, um, yeah, I dance with a lot of great steppers. Yeah. A lot of them. And yeah. that's one thing, that's one thing I tell tell the people about, you know, when I'm you know sharing with uh sharing in conversations that it was like it was like really at our parties, everybody was a killer. Mm. You, you know, when you stepped yeah. on the floor. When you stepped on the floor, you know that if you were dancing with somebody, you uh, cross, and it it was like it was just a gentlemanly like uh comp- you know, not competition, but you wanted to have as many eyes looking right. at you as the person that was next to you, whether they were contest winner or whatever. Right. Uh, let me ask you. The, are the is contest dancing the same thing as was like? Did you ever see anybody like at the old timer set trying to do contest moves on that floor? Never, never. I mean, you had you had your greats like uh, Charlie Green or uh, even woo. Yvonne Paramore or woo. Black Mary. You know, they'll do their little highlight moment or something like that. Um, but for the most part, you had mo- basically everybody stayed in their lane. Mm-hmm. It was like respect, you know. If anything, you walk, you rolling past somebody, and they, you know, basically everybody stayed in their lane. Nobody mm-hmm. tried to knock nobody down. Nobody tried. I mean, I've always thought if you're going to be in a contest, Show yourself in the contest. Yeah. If that is set, take in consideration that the person next to you want to dance to and have a lot, have some room to, you know, um, totally too. I'm glad. I'm glad you said that 
Mm-hmm. I was talking to somebody. I was talking to, I was talking to a stepper today, uh, one of the legends, one of the mm-hmm. dance legends today, and uh, it was like shared that one of the reasons why, uh, well, they're not coming out no more, or they is because uh, the the sanctity of the dance floor or the sanctity of your space has eroded. Mm. It's like when you get to walking on the dance floor, it's like being in the wild, wild west. You're going to do it. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I remember being at the copper box and uh, some of the other great sets that I attended. I don't remember seeing the three, no trios. Oh, we might have somebody here. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Let me see. Hello? 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 Okay, hold on. Let me let me listen up. Hello? Hey, hold on. Let me get this right. Okay, we do have something. All no. right. Yeah, we got some. Let me make sure I got this thing right. And uh, okay, good. Let me put it right there. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Wonderful. I, I, I got I got your daughter. His look, she's smiling yeah. now. <laughs> my daughter, my Yeah, she's yeah. smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> I was trying to get you up, but all I got, I'm getting something from, I'm trying to see what date this is. Oh, uh, that's, when you was, yeah, that's, I don't a, know how to get you on the, on the, on the, on the phone. Okay, that, that's an old one, but all you have to do, I think my chef, she shared it. If, if you just go to her page and yeah. click it, you'll see. Oh, the, page? Yeah, you go to my Jeff's page and you'll see the fresh one. You, okay, you, I'm going to try to do that now. I'm going to call you back. No, don't, no, no. Talk now. And then you do. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk and how now. Do I, go to her? I don't know how to do this, man. Well, don't worry about how to do that. We're just glad we got you because you, we got to get you. might as well get this practice because I got to talk to you too. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't I know you don't think you're going to get away and not just not talk to me. <laughs> One of the mothers of this day. Well, come on now. Okay, but <laughs> now I want you to I want you to tell me about your re- relationship with Marjette. Because she smiled, she went from end to end. She was grinning. So you got you you're gonna have to give me some sweet tidbits about this wonderful woman here. So you you better the come lady on. That you got sitting up there with you. Yes. Let me tell you something about that wonderful lady. She is a real lady and woman. You hear me? I met her when she was about 16 years old. Mm. And Marjorie, do you want me to tell a real story? <laughs> what, whatever, Yvonne, whatever you're listening to, turn it down. Whatever else you're listening to, ask them to it's turn you it down. I'm listening to. No, I mean, but turn that down so we can I'm hear you in this, now, really. in, in this conversation. You know, okay, and and in all these, okay, and I, now. Yvonne, she just not like she just not call, call me by my name. She just used to call me baby all the time. <laughs> Come on, yeah, in that's here, what I was told me to say that now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> oh well, a, amen. But go ahead on and finish telling about your relationship yeah, with my Jack. That young girl oh. started coming out with me with the old timer set, mm-hmm. and she said she learned so much. Following me, I just I'm so proud of her. I'm very Thank proud of her. Like the other five kids, I'm very proud of her, Marjet. She's Thank a you. wonderful lady and a wonderful person. Well, Thank Yvonne, you. I've seen some pictures. I've seen some pictures of you uh with the coterie seven uh at that yes that, my that, guys you know and, and so i just can't wait i'm gonna just leave that right there because i can't wait to get you on this phone so we can talk about wait how what your vision was when you started doing doing this doing this uh social partner dancing when you all started the old timers because i think people need to hear this because they've Forgotten and taking it somewhere else when the original intent was what you all decided. And I, I yeah, I know it's a big difference now. 
Yeah, I co-signed that. You know, I shoot. I love. Yeah, big difference. Yeah. I love what but, you uh, all did. Go ahead. Yeah, well, we did. I thought this was about Margette. It, it is. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. uh, about- Margette was like a professor. She was on it. She was watching what we did, and she came along and did it just like we did, sometimes better. Mm. <laughs> that young lady had a head on her shoulder. She's a wonderful Thank individual. You. What she did, mm. what we did as a, a club is we acknowledged the people that came with us. We gave them something back. We didn't just take from them. We gave mm. them something back. And yeah. that's what made us different than other organizations. We like to reach out every month. We see a different thing. Thing. Did you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, we did a different thing every month. Yeah. We would leave old timers and go for the next month and shop for the next set. Yeah. And Marjet, Marjet has a following like we had. And that's because she's just a wonderful individual. She just she is just a, a, a kind person. She's a, a a real lady. She's a real parent. So you know, it's it's hard to talk about people that you want to definitely the truth about them. And that's like you. You come from way back. Yeah. You come from way back. You ain't just reached out there. You've been out there a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, I know. Sweet. Well, talk to her. She's going to give you a lot of input. And the day that you want to talk to me, I'll have it all together. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you, all right. Thank you for calling. Till I love her. What you're doing, too. That's fantastic what you're doing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, love you, Marjat. Love you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we got... Best of luck for you with everything, sweetie. Thank you. And I think right. so. We Bye-bye, got Rick. that in there. And that... we. we you took care of that one. So mm. I feel much better. We I feel my help coming. We charged up. We can go ahead on and get ready to roll in there strong. So because Yvonne said she you watched her do a lot of things. Yeah. So how did that relationship with you help you formulate what you began to do, what you began to do as a social club or as a promoter? And tell us about your journey as a promoter. Well, I probably I can I'll, I can say I started. In high school, mm-hmm. we used to, um, I sang in the choir, so we were trying to raise money for our choir, our robes. So I would have, uh, I guess, a party. It would be end up being a bopping party or whatever in my grandmother's basement, and from there, uh, we would go to somebody else's house. Some of the, you know, people I went to. Uh, church with they went to Cal Men. So we was in the basement where it was Cal Men or somebody that lived over went to the limb bloom or something like that. And um it just followed me up until I say probably about seventeen, then I stopped. Um then I would have like little parties at my house when um when I got my own house. I started having little parties there. And then I got back into the game after me and Daryl did the Navy Pier. We had a proposition to do an splash party. Okay. And it almost fell through, but, you know, our district, they got their way of doing things. So that didn't happen. Uh, while we were teaching stepping lessons, hey, Val, um, while we were teaching stepping lessons, Valerie Love had came by. I was in Dalton. And she had mentioned to me that there was a new club. And she told me the address. This particular night, Durrell wasn't there. So I called Durrell. I said, Durrell, there's a, a new club in Dalton. Are you, are you interested in, you know, finding out doing a set? And we said, well, we'll do it on a Tuesday night. So that morning... That Wednesday morning, it was whatever morning it was. It had to be, I think I did a Wednesday class. I can't remember what day it was. But the next morning, I called and I spoke to the manager there. Her name was Jerry. And I told her what we were trying to do and what night. She took my number. About five minutes later, I got a call from one of the owners, C.D. Gordon. 
And we sat back and we had a meeting with them and negotiated what, you know, the terms or whatever, the deal. And from there, we took off. We just started doing the step and said, hey, bro, love you. And uh, we started doing um, the step sets. And that, that, that went for 10 years, every Tuesday. I think it was only three Tuesdays that I didn't show up. And I had broke my ankle. Mm. That was the only reason I had a cask on. I couldn't get there. But outside of that, I would go to work, come home, get ready, go to 3G's, leave there, be tired as I don't know what, and had to get up and deliver the mail the next day. People didn't know I was doing that. (laughs) And never never called off. Never called off. Had to keep making that money. So you was so you are from the post office. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Retired. Yeah. I'm a post office alumni. Okay, okay. So I was an LSM, LSM operator. You know. My, okay. Uh, I worked on the four four thirty three West Van Buren uh, plantation. Okay. <laughs> okay, I was on in the Bowling Brook and Lamont plantation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those good old days. Uh, I, wouldn't, hear me. I wouldn't trade the years uh, at the PO for nothing. Yeah. It was yeah. a great time. And yeah. uh, uh, it's a lot of dancers that mm-hmm. came out of the post office. See, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of people think that uh, the stepping scene came from a particular area. Mm. But, but no, uh, the stepping scene was a uh, it was a melting pot of different right. and great individuals. You know, you can start mm-hmm. off, you can say Barnett, William Barnett. Ooh, William you Barnett. Say, you can say Luther Gage. Mm. You can say VA. Yeah. Uh, you can say Stanley Smith. Brown. Yeah. Uh, Claudel Jackson. You yeah. Got the Haywood brothers. Uh, yeah. Keith and Larry Haywood. Uh, yeah. my, myself. Um, you had some women too. A go ahead. Of, yeah, Martha, uh, Tina, mm-hmm. little Tina. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. it's a few more. I can't think of everything, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and so that, and then that that not not only includes uh, you know, CTA bus drivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie Green was a bus driver. Oh yeah, Sam. Sam, Sam was a bus driver, uh, and we got firemen. And mm-hmm. then we had plenty of police on set. Yeah, you know, that's right. That's why our set set stayed so smooth. You yeah, know? yeah. A couple of policemen that was DJs, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was a real good thing. Now let's let's talk about let's talk about some of the etiquette. That you 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 did tell me you were instructed. Yes. Okay. So I basically what? did it all. <laughs> yeah. Even hosted a contest for like six years. So yeah. What is some of the etiquette that you see today? Uh, uh, what is some of the etiquette that might be missing today that we did back yesterday? Well, I can't talk about the classes because right. right. No, uh, I can't talk about the classes because really I don't go to them. Uh, I can't criticize. Uh, I would like to think that everyone would first teach every the the, the guys to go and get the ladies and uh, bring them, take them back to at least walk them off the floor. Uh, how to be courteous on the floor when you step in to give another person enough room. That would probably be the first thing I, I know that would have, well, that was the first thing we would teach, you know, dance in a, in a box. That way you give someone else some room. Um, that's basically it outside of teaching them, you know, the count, um, I, the count only came in because I think that when you got more than probably two or three people, you had to have a format. Mm-hmm. So 
So you have to debate. I mean, it, you could have did the six count, but people, it's still a kick kick in there, which ends up being eight count. Um, and, you know, I just really, that's basic to me. You know, um, basically, I really can't say much of what somebody else does in their class. Right, right. Yeah. So do you think do you think that uh do you think that it would get better if we focus back more on some of the etiquette uh like for example in a crowded set that's not a place for for a trio No. No. I mean uh, why? <laughs> I mean everybody wants to enjoy themselves so give the other person or a couple the leeway you give them enough room so they can enjoy themselves. We all basically paying the same amount of money to get in the place. Mm. You know, uh, I just like to enjoy the music, and 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 that's it. I mean, personally, I'm not trying to impress anybody. When it comes to me impressing, I get in the contest. In other words, I'm gonna be laid back and just enjoy the music. If I have me a nice little cocktail. And the song is right. I can roll all night, mm. and and it, it's usually it's usually something from back in the day. So wow. yeah, it, it, I mean, in the right person, I roll all night. I might have a little knee problem or foot problem or something like that, but but you know, you tend to tend to float and want to just continue to work out. You know, it's like a workout. You know. Um, but yeah, um, I leave the the spinning and then competition, all that. I leave that somewhere else. They don't they don't come out with me when I'm coming out to enjoy myself. Okay, so yeah. that's so that's one of the, that's one of the rules. Okay, mm -hmm. coming out on the, when you're coming out to deal with the social part of dance, no contest stepping. <laughs> just, <laughs> just when you go to contest that's when you contest dance but when you yeah. come to a set right. that's when you just dance now, right do you remember when do you remember when we actually started saying when we were stepping because i can't you know i can't remember that you know when it start when it actually changed because all i know is that i was going to a set to dance right I would say probably maybe back when was it the mellow fellas that used to get a set at the Sheba? Mm, nah, I, I don't know. When I talked to VA, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was, they might have did theirs at the Sheba. It might have been doing that. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. But it was that, around that time because it was still because I don't remember it being stepping at the old time of set. I, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> or was it when the committee had their set? No, because they was having the contests and they were saying step the sets. Let's see. Uh, now, see, were I got saying, Were they I saying got, it when you had your set? On I, I got a, I got a, uh, I got a, I got a plugger uh, from, from the, from the, People's choice. I got a plugger. Might even okay. have to try to bring that up. But as late as 1988, yeah, we weren't, we weren't saying steppers. That's what I'm saying. That 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 that. that yeah, yeah. We because the stepper said the stepping came out on the original when they had the first original world's largest Anheuser Busch contest. Was it V103 Anheuser Busch? Okay, so let me no let me, around because that's what they was calling it, the world yeah. largest Anheuser Busch V one hundred and three stepping contest, something so, like. That. We did have Mr. Rodney Burke on a couple of weeks ago, and oh. so we, so we got that clear. It was yeah, it was Anheuser Busch. Yeah. Uh, oh, it man. was Anheuser Busch. Yeah, but yeah, see, all the perks. You won when you didn't win. You got it as long as you got the contest, you got the, the cruise, you got the shoes. <laughs> that's, that's what Mr. Burke made clear. Yeah. Uh, 
the V103 and uh, the promotions director at that time, uh, they were just they were just the voice, the mother piece, but all right. the money for all of that actually yeah, it Bush. Yeah, it came from Anheuser Bush and Mr. Rodney Burke. And yeah. he might be listening today, but we he definitely he got hey. to tell us tell us that story. So that's mm -hmm. a good thing. But that was like part of like the the mystique of the dance, I mean, of the contest in its early days, because the contest yeah. is like right now, thirty one years old, thirty two years old. Yeah, and, uh, we didn't, ha we haven't had it, but they're going to try to have it this year. Okay. Uh, Pete Pete said he's going to try to bring it up this year. Okay. So, so I'm wait I'm waiting to see it, and then everybody, all the past winners and stuff, they're going to be honored and brought forward okay. and I, think, I think that's that's going to be nice so you know for the very first one you know i was a judge there okay and when uh i witnessed that that controversy not well not the controversy it was just really um two different styles of stepping yeah, that's it it was two different styles, two different styles of stepping. you know my my uh marzette and uh, Dimples did one, one style, and then uh, Little Alfred and yeah. Janice did another, and they were yeah. both great. But you yeah. know, on showmanship, you know that Little Alfred man, that was a bad. Yeah. Day. Well, I think that's that. That was the beginning of old school women. Now that was the beginning of freestyle. Yes. And stepping. That's when they yeah. split the contest up. Yeah. That was the beginning, and that ran for a couple of years. Yeah. And then, oh wow! I just so, thought yeah. about Weasel when Weasel danced in his diaper. In that diaper, oh man! <laughs> and Casper did. Casper did the skates. Now I yeah. was gone, man, but I yeah. heard about all those. Yeah. Things, you know. and, and my Casper, sister used to do splits. Her and rock. My sister was uh, she won second place twice doing yeah. um. She was uh, cheerleaders for the Bulls, so she was doing slips and splits. That helped them out getting, you know, win or whatever. But yeah, them was the good old days. Them was the good old days. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that was sweet. That was sweet. Yeah. Uh, that contest actually came out of uh, Mr. Ricky's the mm -hmm. after work, Thursday yeah. after work set, uh, where, yeah. Mr., where Mr. Burke, he was there almost like every Thursday. You know, okay. he, was sure he was. He was in Mr. Ricky's in that place, and I remember it was just interesting. Now, when you went, you came to the Ricky set. Yeah, I qualified there for that first that contest. I won. Oh, okay. in second place. I qualified. I can remember clearly. Whoa, whoa! I like this. That was a little video thing. <laughs> Had hair about right here. Yeah, it was good. That set was off the chain, though. That was a good Thursday set. I think, yeah, I even gave away splits of champagne to, was it twins? That might have been a Wednesday night. That was, that was, also that went on Wednesday, too, on the other side. Yeah, the, the Rat Pack did Wednesday. Because yeah. yeah. I, was, I was there, I did that, that set Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I think that Wednesday night was like ladies night when Ricky would do right. that, that split okay. of champagne and then coming back in there on Thursday. Mm -hmm. But I was I wasn't going down there on Friday because that was house night. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't go. I didn't need it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to listen to no. I had to do. I, I mean, you know, but I I had burned myself out with the stepping, so I ain't want to do house music. Well, I was, what, so what about what about this thing? Everybody always talk about. Well, man, you know, South Side this, South Side this, West Side this, West Side that. What was your what was your position on the South and West Side? Was it the same dance or just different people doing the same dance? What it, was it? Did you get it was just the same dance? I loved the West Side. Truth be yeah. told, I loved it. I loved going to the Horizon West mm -hmm. and going to the Rose. I would mm -hmm. go to uh shoot, that was the back in the day. That was the that was the place to go. It was like the I think. The South Side men would go to the West Side, and the West Side men would go to the South Side. The women, only the strong women traveled. Okay. The most, most, most women didn't travel all the way on the West Side. You know, um, 
you got more, I think, more of the south west west side women to come south. But it was mm-hmm. very few women from the south side that would travel west. Mm. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't remember. I remember seeing all the west siders like the Fox sets. That I would see them, I would see them south. Well, they own the west side. And Donald Fox and oh gosh, don't get me started. Talking about different people. Well, I'm well, the great. Yeah, because you know, people say, Oh, you ain't even with you my name, you know. And yep. stuff like that. Oh, and I'm glad you said that because I do have to, I do have to acknowledge and I want to make sure that I say this because it was like one of the things that I forgot, you know, last week, you know, last Monday, I interviewed uh, Lester Gibbs, right? Mm-hmm. And, it's because of Lester that I I started this conversations program. Okay. okay. So I want, I want to say this. And I want to say this. And uh, and because I forgot to say it, because I tell Lester that all the time, because he's like my mentor. And we're going to talk about your other mentors or your mentors, okay. you know, in a moment. But Lester told me one day, he said, Reg, he said, you know, this pandemic is taking out people, you know, he said, and uh, there's no information out on us. You know, mm-hmm. none of our story is being told nowhere. You yeah. know how to right. talk. Right. And, and that hit me like a ton of bricks. And uh, I know now that Lester's story, as long as YouTube is in, a, in existence, mm-hmm. his story and how he felt about that about this dance. It's right. like same thing with uh, uh, Maddie B, my mm-hmm. the DJ, uh, Earl Williamson, Coach Earl, and you know that's that was the that was the thing that warmed my heart. Just the same. Mm-hmm. So now Margette will be there along with Daryl Davis, and this is the whole thing that's about this program. All it's about is about gathering the oral history, right? All the individuals that were out there. It is so many. Yeah, no one person. No one person knows it all. And yeah. uh, I'm so happy that Leanna connected us so mm, that you could, tell, you could tell yeah. your story. And so I want to make sure that I give, you know, acknowledgement to everybody. And yes. I want to encourage the young, younger people to listen to this. Yes. Not for us to try, not for me to try to right. tell you what to do or anything like that, but for you to see the love and that there was it was never all about any competition because i know i knew the cats who were killers yeah you know, yeah I wasn't, I wasn't scared of them but i mm-hmm. if could do this and do that man i said man that's cool like my guest yeah. next week uh benny harris i don't care, oh. what, I don't care what nobody say yeah benny, benny, go. Benny, 800 miles an hour and yeah. stop on a dime, you know. That's the way you do it, though, because he be still in the step. Yeah, you, you know. know and that old beat on step. That's how you step. You come back. You don't do no extra stuff and can't come back on step. You and your partner are supposed to be able to say, bam. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Yep. I want to acknowledge all the different styles and things like that. And I'm going to get to talk to you I want to include, I definitely want to include the younger people in knowing, you know, in with their stories as well, because yeah. I don't know about anything that happened after 94. Okay. Gone. From yeah. 94, we're actually 93 to 2018. It's a 26-year period. I was gone. Yeah. 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 And so I want to I want to learn that so we could kind of like stitch this thing together. Old Twyla is saying hello and Shalas. Hey. And, and Shalas uh she's saying she's saying to you, oh as that's Eddie uh Montgomery, he's saying hey, what's up and then Twyla is saying hello. Hey y'all. She says she loves us both and Shalas is saying, What about the Keeman Club and the Safari Room? Safari Room, I can remember that. I can't. The Keeman Club, I heard of it, but I don't recall going to it. Now I might have went and just didn't know the name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you had so many different clubs to go to. 
you know, it was always a hole in the wall that you can go to. And those were a lot of great steppers. The greatest steppers was going to those hole in the walls where people really don't believe it, but it's the truth. I mean, you had like uh, Yvonne Paramore, uh, Black Mary, shoot, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, he was a sweetheart, Tyrone Wallace. Yep. Ooh, I love George Harris. Uh, oh God, it was so many. William Barnett, you know William Barnett. Rather people be- know it or not, he was the original master of promoting a stepper set. And a lot of people don't know that, but I, I always try to tell the story because I honestly believe that you know how you're supposed to give a person they recognition. He get it every time I see him. I don't care what nobody say. He was the one that actually was the king of promoting. He was the one that took it downtown. He took it to a whole nother level and everybody else fell in place. Did I go too far? No, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, absolutely not. You go ahead. I mean, I'm just telling the history that I, know. I mean, I've been, I've been saying that I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm begging by net. I'm going to get him. I'm going to corner him. And I, mm-hmm. even if I just have to just get him on the phone, and just mm-hmm. let him talk because, mm-hmm. because uh, you know, we all have our challenges in our life. Yeah. Because of the challenges that, that Mr. Barnett had that still cannot, that still does not diminish the mm-hmm. fact that Barnett was given two and three sets. Yeah, and he sure was. He one was. In the, on the west side, one mm-hmm. uh, south side, and, yeah. on the west, and one downtown. He was doing yeah. all well, Ricky, yeah. how do you know? Because I was spinning one of them. Right. Mr. Ricky's on 55th on a Friday. At Friday. Look, that's what, you know, it's countless guys, you know, uh, countless guys tell me, man, Ricky, that's why I first heard you spin. I got in, in the opening. I mm-hmm. even got a picture of me standing in my <laughs> and standing in Mr. Ricky's with my equipment mm-hmm. and stuff like that in, in the back room. Yeah. Doing, when I was on 55th. So yeah. Barnett is Barnett is just he Barnett is foundational to yes yes he is health. he is mm-hmm. very foundational so I'm just I'm glad you said that I, I just, mm-hmm. and even Luther Gage back in the day on a Friday night at the East of the Rhine ten, yeah, years, ten years ten years Luther had that in, impact yep. yes he yep. did yeah ten years he had that impact. And you know, yeah, I, 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 I tried to talk. I tried to talk to him, but Luther, you know, and y'all could tell him what I said. Luther, you know, he big time on the radio now, so you don't want to talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he he graduated to the next level. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he he big time on the radio now. He got the Luther Gage <laughs> show. He on yeah. the thing. I said, like, oh, he don't want to be bothered. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all potatoes conversations like yeah. this. Yeah. But that yeah. East of the Rhine set. Now I went to that oco- occasionally. Mm-hmm. I would come in, you know, uh, back in the day. I would come in and go out because that was like the after set. Because they like stayed for at stayed till four o'clock, open at four yeah. o'clock, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, on that Friday. So it was mm-hmm. two places. It was yeah. two places where folk would go after they left the regular lounge sets. You mm-hmm. know, to go into the other place with Maceo after Maceo. Uh, yeah, he loosened his stand on Jack. Mm-hmm. He let the steppers come in there. Yep, he did. Because at one point, Mazio was letting no, he didn't care nothing about no yep. steppers. Ain't yep. money. He wasn't letting no steppers yep. come in there. But you had a lot of different steppers coming up in there. Yeah, so you, got, you got them steppers that will spend money, and you got them steppers that want to get in everything. <laughs> it's because of their name. Okay, it costs to promote. People hear me. It costs to promote. Nothing is free. Five or ten dollars ain't gonna hurt you. If you ain't got it, stay home. Yeah. Now I shouldn't have said that, but I'm telling the truth. So on that so, note, so tell me about tell me about the the role of being a promoter. What is it that you have to go through to put off to bring forward a social club set? You know, what well, is you, it what you have to do? Well, you make your contacts and um, where you know just finding the right location because people mm-hmm. don't want to go anywhere. Parking, uh, 
then you got to respect the fact that the people that own the building got bills. So to try to negotiate with somebody on the where you can make you some money, you mm -hmm. know, that's not an easy task. Um, depending on where I was lucky to do a couple of lounges. So um, matter of fact, with three G's, the the person, uh, C.D. Gordon was like, you know, we was talking about five dollars. He was like, no, I don't want nobody to spend no money. So I, I knew that some steppers didn't really, they didn't really, they was going to get in and not spend no money. So I was like, well, why don't we do a three dollar drink ticket? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you buy a pop or buy a water and it worked. It worked. I mean, for the, I mean, it was times that I seen some people didn't want to pay three dollars. But <laughs> And then, you know, and it was the sad part was the people that it would upset the people that was sitting in the front of the place that was spending money. They would sit back and see a few people walk in that was going straight to the back and then go to the bar and ask for some water. Well, you know, that's a lot of heat for a person to take. You know, um, I'm like, even if you don't drink, buy somebody a drink, mm. you know, mm. you know, that. Last act, you know, um, I done shocked some men at times and say, What you drinking? Right. Only because of me showing my appreciation for people supporting me throughout the years. Something small makes a it makes a big deal to somebody else. I had one guy, he just really freaked out. He was like, I had never had a woman to buy me a drink, and it was nothing to it. Mm. He just he say only you and another woman has ever, both of us were promoters. Mm -hmm. You know, she promoted in the lounge life and I promoted on the stepper scene. So it's a lot to it, but if you enjoy it, it's not as much as a big deal as some people think it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I always try to greet people and treat people the way I wanted to be treated. And that's the first thing. Um Always stay level. Keep your head, you know, just stay level, you know, keep stay true to you, but don't take it to a point where, you know, I'm better than somebody else or whatever. It was, you know, it was a, a personal and business thing for me okay. because I got to meet a lot of people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a lot of things I seen, a lot of a lot of conversations I had, they were kept between me and that person. Uh -oh. Sometimes, sometimes uh -oh. I could be just sitting back while Daryl was in the back hosting the dance floor. I would be up in the front talking to people, and you know, they might have. I just made people feel comfortable where they would share things with me. Uh -huh. They would stay between me and that person, and that that person from that day, they respect me because. You know, I might have shared something with them. I would tell them, you know, keep the faith. You know, sometimes you got to go through the bad to get to the good. Or, you know, they're just different little things like that. It was a, it's a lot to come with if you are a serious promoter. Okay. And it's true to you about the, in your heart. It wasn't always about the money. It was, I enjoy doing it. That customer service. Yeah. Service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And relationships and yeah. networking. Yeah. You know, you know, we got a lot of people chiming in right now, and well, because I'm like almost losing the dog on uh, I'm hi losing. everybody, yeah, there you go. Shelly is saying hi, hi, you're Shelly. Listening, you're listening hey, to conversations. Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to conversations, and my guest is my Jack Coleman, legendary dancer and promoter. Coming up on Monday, I guess my guest will be Spinning Benny Harris. Yeah. Spinning Benny will be here on uh, on Monday. So I want to thank uh, my producer, Rachel Knight, and let's take a look. And also the Brain Trust. I want to thank Leanna Miles. And I want to thank uh, Earl Williamson and Black Man Willie Bell. You know, see, you do need people. Thank you, Bob. Mm hmm and it's always it's always in the connections, you know, that you deal with. Cause I call I call Willie Bell to just about talk about something off off the top, and then Earl Earl just gives me a, a deep sense of 
what what I missed in the dance. And and, and then you know, Earl has referred people to me, Reggie, you need to talk to this person. Reggie, you need mm -hmm. and, and I've been taking those things to heart. And that's the same thing with Leanna. She does the same thing. So uh, and so, Leanna and Hollywood Frank. Now now Ooh. that now, now that yeah. one now, don't make me look for that and show that now. But you that, one, do that I got Ooh. to I got to talk. I'm gonna look for it, but I got to talk to Frank. Period. Yes, because Lester said that's where his first one of his first instructors was. His first ment mentor was Hollywood. I can believe that. I can believe that. You know, mm -hmm. so Frank is Frank is. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up, and we could talk about that. But Frank is like mm -hmm. he's the coolest thing, man. He on this. Yeah. Uh, good cool. stuff from Rosalind May. <laughs> I'm going to call a lot of people sis because that's what they are to me. <laughs> yes, she says, thanks for sharing your knowledge. And uh, Sylvia Jones, that's true. Barnett was an originator of Stepping Sets yeah. and the new Copper Box. Mm -hmm. William Barnett, Flower Man. Yeah. Okay, so, and man, I am so, I am so pleased to have <laughs> my broadcasting colleague. Hey. And all around entertainer, Casper. Yes, I think I'm. A, I, I want to get Casper. I want to get Casper on the line, and you know, I can talk to him. Yeah. About him oh, him on, but, I, but I also want to talk to Casper about them Panama shows. Oh, now I was in them too. Go ahead now, tell me about. <laughs> 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 oh, it in hell. Yeah. Catch yeah, I will be in those contests and win a little something. something. I got to start a little bit before Casper, though. Yeah, because Casper coming out. One of my favorites is when Casper has that makeup and he like two artists. Half and half. Yes. <laughs> Stephanie Mills, who's it? Stephanie Mills and Teddy Pettigrew. Oh, that yeah. boy. Oh, oh, that boy. Yeah. Those are the good old days. Yeah. I even seen, you know, when I really seen, I hate to say this, but I was at the Millennium. No, not the Millennium. What was it? Happy Medium? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I seen P. Frazier. That was the first time I seen Panama. P. Frazier and two other guys. It might have been Weasel. Uh, they did. Oh God, it was a uh, hip hop. The hippity, the hippity, the hip hip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They jam. And yeah. then I seen a young lady do "Diamonds in the Sky," uh, "Diamonds in the Sky" by Natalie Cole. Okay, that was a good night. I said, "Ooh, I got into." That's when I got introduced to that. At least I can remember those things. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Panama. That was another art that I was into. One of my favorite, one of my favorites on set was uh, was the guy. His name was Sherman, and he used to. Do oh yeah. He used to do Rance Allen. I belong. Yes. And Sherman yes. was coming there in, in one outfit. <laughs> yeah, he would come in there in one outfit. And next thing you know, he'll have him turn on yep. the light. Then he'll do that. I belong yep. to you and put the light on. And he'd yep. be all, he'd be looking all that. Yeah. Yep. went into it when we did the Panama. Yep. Yep. And I'm yep. glad you brought that out. Jackie um, Jackson. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Uh, Rose. Uh, Rose. Oh God, what was Rose's last name? Her and Jackie Jackson. Oh, I can't get Jack Rose's last name out. But she died some years ago. Who, who is this? Who is this? Are oh, you want to talk some more? Or you got I gotta call you back. <laughs> oh, okay. Listen, listen, my chat. Listen, my jet. I mean, <laughs> Yvonne just called and told me she she bring we bringing back the memories and she's just yeah. like enjoying it. Yeah, how we go from step to Panama? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> we had some greats. We yeah. had greats. Uh, let's see who we got here. Um, Special K. Uh, Marjet did Jesus can <laughs> gonna work it out. She won hands down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Casper said Rose Woodhouse. Right. Yeah, good. Right on, Casper. So you know, Casper, yeah. 
we, yeah. we got the inbox because you know I gotta yeah. get you on there because we gotta talk yeah. about we gotta talk about that coach because yeah uh, you know stepping sets stepping sets uh they were they like kind of like included a little bit of everything especially when mm -hmm. I was on yeah I never played more than I never played more than one boogie cut and we always did a line dance and there was yeah. always there was always that birthday dance with them jazz cuts. Cause you know, mm -hmm. you, it was either cheaters never win that long mm -hmm. thing, or you mm -hmm. got you got you uh you got that down ain't, ain't that a groove and going down home you got right. some hard jazz cuts that right. you have to play. But mm -hmm. our sets, our sets were always they included a little bit of everything. Cause I know yeah. at one time, uh, especially when I was doing the set uh for the comp not competition but for the connection yeah great set great set yeah. uh i played i actually played the rap naughty by nature but i would play the instrumental and steppers went crazy mm -hmm. they loved yeah. dance off of hip hop yeah. boy, and I, yeah. would down, I would slow it down a little bit and i say oh mm -hmm. man they, they yep. were getting in they were getting into it now yeah. now we at the good part we at this part where you know i'm i've been on this mission you know i'm carrying this banner and this banner, this one flag I have, has walking on it. Mm. What is what is your view on walking? Well, I was taught steppers, walkers on the outside and steppers on the inside. <laughs> that 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 was like the call when that was proper etiquette. Okay. Okay. And that, you know, you could do whatever you want to in that little circle, but on the outside, you had to give the respect to the walkers and let them do their thing. Mm. Yeah. Now, now, a lot of ladies say that they don't like to walk today because uh, it's too intimate. It's 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 too much intimacy with that dance. What's your view? Well, I feel somewhat the same. It depends. <laughs> Uh, if it's a, if if I know you a true walker, okay, then I can walk with you. But just to be walking with anybody, it's kind of intimate, you know. Especially, you know, I don't want nobody thinking I want somebody. I don't want nobody's man out here, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, get too intimate and close. You know, people get to, you know. So I stay in my lane. I if you can slow step or slow bop, we can roll. A okay. walking, the walking, um, it's not the same as back in the day, to me. Okay, um, you got your true walkers. I mean, I love watching them. I love it, but I prefer me. I prefer the slow bop. Okay, all yeah. right, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm and, with and most people that I think that walk, they usually walk with the same people. Okay. You know, even if it's a close friend, they just got that person that they got that connect with. Hmm. Well, right now, while we talking now, I'm looking for something because I'm going. I'm going to bring. I got. I'm, since we talking about it, I got to. I'm going to see if I can find Hollywood and see if I can put him up here. And uh, because, I mean, when I saw Frank walk, walk, mm. and. You know, even as a younger person, when I seen him walk, he uh, and Calvin and some of the other guys, uh, yeah, I never seen any any violation of a lady's face. Mm. You know, I never seen, I've never seen that. Now, there's some. I think one of the worst things, and we, I've, I discussed that uh, last week, and with and with Lester Gibbs as well. The one thing that guys didn't want to have, well, shouldn't want having happened to them is the fact that he didn't dance with a lady and then the girl the lady the woman goes back and tell her friend girl i ain't dancing with reggie miles no because he was, he was all <laughs> he, he was all over me trying to trying to uh be all up in my space and this that and other mm -hmm. so, that, so that was one thing that i definitely guarded against you know and as a uh, mm -hmm. Calvin Barnes say, you know, ain't no, ain't no crouch to coochie, ain't none of that when you really, doing, when you doing, when you really doing this walk, when right, you're, right, and right, 
when you're right. in class about it. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I have discovered, and I discovered this recently uh, visiting uh, one of the classes that one of the instructors, uh, Shawnee Simmons, uh, what she teaching, I found mm-hmm. that her students, man, they're, these, they're now people, the young ladies now are craving now to walk, to, to mm. learn how to walk in this dance. But yeah, what I'm finding really- out is that the brothers are the ones that don't know how to walk. Right, right, right. That's what I'm finding out. And I say, yeah. oh, I don't, and, and that was hard for me to understand because that's all I wanted to do first. <laughs> wow. Right, right, right. That was the look. I used to, uh, we put on some Al Green in the house, and my auntie would be like, Oh, whoa, she that's um, hey, that was the thing to do back then. See, and Casper, Casper says a lot of people really don't know how to walk, yeah. And, and, and and I agree with you with what you said because I, I mean when I'm spending with family and right you always got one of those uncles or one of the cousins say boy you blood you play some dog on play a song record because you know you see this woman in the party you know you trying to rap to mm-hmm. you know you got this suit on and right. you got the cologne and right. you want to try to get to check you out right but uh and that's really part of what we do I don't, I'm still mm-hmm. looking to find out how we got away start moving away from this walking thing but get but we're, we're gonna get back to it let's see yeah. yeah so denise says we need more men dancers uh that do the walk because when i went to the class that denise was at and i'm telling you the young ladies they wanted they wanted to actually learn how to do this yeah and, and I actually, you know, proved a couple of points to some of the young dancers that, you know, I can, I can be stepping with you and I can go into a, I can cut time. Yeah. I, I can start stretching out and striding with you and do a walk and then go back to stepping on right. any song that I want to do. With right. You. Right. You know? And so, and I, I, I want to, I want to say this. And I know you know this, that mm-hmm. our dance is not one dimensional. No, no. You, you know, and I agree that if you're stepping and you want to be a stepper, then you be that. But to be right. a stepper and a dancer is two different things. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is what Daryl said. Now, I had to take notes. Daryl said, bopping is the original dance. Mm-hmm. Stepping is the popular name yeah but it's the same dance yes it is that's what he said he says what makes the difference is how you apply the steps mm-hmm. that's what he said i bought that but being out there in my experiences in the dance in the early years listen you guys only dance with one hand mm. because we were carrying our coat yeah. On the other arm, and I know you saw that. Yeah, you either, uh, you either saw guy. You can there's a, there's a video out here that, of the Beverly House. You saw guys mm-hmm. holding their coat, or they were in their full trench coats, and yeah. so the guy was not going to lay his coat down because they were mm-hmm. in the set that was going to get that right. coat. Right, you right, know, right. Was, yeah, God. <laughs> yeah. that's so, for real. Though. So. That's where the one hand, that's why the one hand bop mm-hmm. in the 60s and going into the early 70s, that was that was paramount. Cats, right. cats, cats made it a style of dancing with just one hand. Mm-hmm. When the new bop came out, the new bop freed us because the new bop started using two hands. Yeah. You're talking about Slam Herbie and all these dogs. Right cats from the low end and stuff mm-hmm. and that's when that new bob came out and then i don't know all i know is that the popularity of the name stepping mm-hmm. because right. as long as i went to a party all i said that i wanted to do was go and dance right yeah and being a dancer i will i would want to walk uh slow bob mm-hmm. and Wow. But yeah. of course, 
you know, when in my sock hop days, before I went to the sock hop days, you know, I, I love yeah. the basement parties. Now, yeah. basement yeah, there you parties. go. Yes, <laughs> For real. For <laughs> real. The basement parties, we wasn't doing nothing but being bad. Right. That's, when, <laughs> that's, when, that's when I used to see, uh, now I, I hate to say it, but that's when I used to see Todd Skippy and Demita. They were in they were in the basement stepping Ooh. always going to the basement party. That's why I said I went to I was all over the place. Um they was in the basement, everybody stepped back, let them do their thing, and then you know, a uh, couple of guys be dancing together, and then finally I get a dance in, and then here comes a little line. You know, I mean that's what we was doing back then, you know. Uh but it's yeah. Lisa Alexander having a fist. She's saying, Oh my, I almost miss my girl. You, can, <laughs> you ain't gonna miss her, Lisa. You can you can always you can always go back and get these conversations. They're mm -hmm. being recorded to YouTube and they're being recorded. Oh, and I messed up today, dog. I was gonna try something, but I'll have to do it on the next one. But I'm gonna mm -hmm. also make podcasts. Okay. And I'm gonna put it on my podcast site. So, but I'm gonna cut them down, make okay. them condensed versions, you know. And so, because it's all about compiling this this oral history, yeah, yeah. about people that made it. You and Daryl, y'all had y'all set, and y'all ran ten years at your yeah. Center. Yes. How many places that you? How many places did you have your set at? Was it two, three? What? Well, me and Daryl did uh, three Gs. Mm -hmm. And I think for about um, four years, I did um, Mega May birthday party with uh, Richard Richard Willis, Reggie Brown, and Lamar Atkins. Uh, we did that for about four or five years. Uh, oof, did I just oh, yeah. I, I, um, we did uh, this place out in University Park. It was called Oh God, what was the name of that place? Um, Mm. You know what Daryl was trying to figure it out too. And I know I know the name of it. He was in University Park. But I did a few uh, let me see. And I sit back and think it's some more. Oh, I do a, a backyard party every Sunday, summer. Um I did that do that for mm, it's been about six years I've been doing that. So um I did a lot of promotions. Raising money for the Jackie Robinson um, scholarship fund. Okay. That was my backyard party was about. Um, they give out scholarships to uh, those that's going to college, and they even do it so they give money also to people that are not on the team. So uh, you know, I donate to organizations when I can, and uh, that's about probably enough promoting. I guess I've done. Uh, I can't remember everything. <laughs> Boy, I, 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 okay, good. That's uh, look. I I found it, but now I got to find out where it is because I'm gonna let you see it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do it, and because I've been telling her, I got I've been telling her she's got to. I'm talking about Leanna. I've been telling mm -hmm. her she's got to her in Hollywood. She's got yeah. to come here, and she got to talk. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I, I want her to talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gonna wait and do it in her good time. You know how Leanna is. Yeah, yeah Leanna, that's my girl. Now, me and Leanna, I've been knowing her since we were like 15 years old. We went to school together. We went to Hirsch. Mighty wow. Hustlers. Yes. And we was rolling back then. It was only a few of us that knew how to even box back then. Yes. All right, hold on. Yeah, it is. I, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. I got to get it. So man, I'm gonna pull it up. And Sue, so I got this new system right in there, and I'm working the kinks out. So I'm rolling. I'm rolling pretty. Rolling. It's it's okay. And uh, I'm seeing. I, I know how to put the right looks and stuff like that. So it, it's coming along. It's coming along. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right. We want to thank uh, any new, any new and fresh comments. But I'm gonna pull this one down. While I'm at it, uh, Club Rebound. Where was Club Rebound at? That was a new. When Stead said, "Me and Dura. Okay. And then we and then we left there and went over to Three G's. Okay, and, and your 
All right, your DJs. Uh, Mella Chris. Uh, actually, we started off with Ron Brown. Uh, good man, good man. Okay. Yeah, he passed away some years ago. We started wow. off with him. Yeah, he's been, he's passed. It's been a while. It's wow. probably been about 15, maybe, maybe, wow. yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our first DJ was, uh, good Lord. Mm, mm, mm. He'll kill me. Oh, gosh. He moved to Atlanta. I feel so bad right now. When limo? Uh, hmm? Wasn't Limo G? I know he was. No, um, he went, no. Um, God, goodness. Well, it was Mel Chris, E.T. Taylor. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. I feel so crazy right about now because he was our first DJ. Oh, he lives in Atlanta. He would come home and play for, why well, I can't think of his name. Goodness, I'm gonna have to look at my phones, get a lineup of all the DJs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, because I hate to. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna get his name. Oh, somebody help me. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I'll think of it later. Right. Good, good. I I got this. So I'm gonna just take and pull this and put this thing in here. DJ Raphael. Okay, okay. Raphael was our first DJ out there at the club rebound in University Park. Oh, God, forgive me if he's listening. Forgive me. Club rebound in University Park. Yeah, that's what we got started at. And we had um, sweethearts were honorary members. Uh, Betty Boop, she was a manager at the Copper Box back in the day. Uh, William Perkins, Bill Perkins. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, we had a few other people that um, that were just helping us promote, you know. And then we went on over. Betty hung in there with us to the end. You know, Bill packed up and left us. He was always <laughs> leaving. He was always leaving, you know. But for the most part, we uh, we held it down, like I said, for ten years. Maybe shy of a couple of months. We just okay. round off to ten. Mm. Yeah. So, what is it that you see today that uh, what can we do today to help uh, the newer steppers uh, understand or maybe party like like we used to, like we used to play or like we used to party? What can well, we you do to help them? Because I don't I'm, look. I don't want to fight them. I want to I want to help them. I want to be with them. Well, first of all, they got to be willing to want to even hear anything. Okay. I think okay. it is it's been getting to the point where I think they want to you know, I know they promote their thing or whatever, but they have to make themselves look more um like the legend to the people that they got coming up under them. Okay, okay. The real proper thing is to keep this going, because it's only Chicago style. Yes, it has hit the world, but it, the best way to do anything is always go back to your roots and learn the knowledge of it um, and pay homage to those that was before you. You know, I mean, it, what's so hard about that? You still going to get your glory. I mean, Thanks to you and Leanne for thinking about me. Because like she said, when Daryl came on, she said, we got to have you. Well, I can truly say that it had to be somebody from back in the day to do this because somebody knew it's not going to do it. Mm. Uh -oh. good, thing, good thing about me is I don't really care if anybody gives me the recognition that I have already paved the way for. Come on, come on. So, I, you know... Um, but those that do know me, they still give me much love and they give me much respect. But the proper way to do it is don't never forget where you come from. Okay. You can go a long ways if you just share just a little bit. Because most of us that's here that's been there and did all that, we just we just coming out to just enjoy ourselves. We ain't trying to take nothing from nobody. Okay. I said that, you know, but um I, you know, it's always good to make somebody feel good. 
you ain't got to introduce me. You ain't got to do nothing. Those that know me, like I said, they're going to come and recognize me. Give me love. I'm going to give it back to them because I'm always happy to see everybody. Mm. But you can't really, it's it's like, the, it's, it's, it's a generation. Five years can be a difference in a way. Um, I'm the oldest out of seven. And I could say five years between me a cut from being cut from a different cloth. We came from the same person and raised the same way, but their way of thinking is different from mine. Mm. You know, mm. um, and and that's just it. I think at our time we were probably like the last of the ones that really were taught. Uh, we felt like nothing was owed to us. We had to go and get ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just didn't feel like nobody owed us anything. This some of these people now is like you feel like somebody owed them something, or they walk past you and just you know be in their own little world. Mm. You know, and I wouldn't okay. take it personal. That's just them. You know, right. that's just right. them. Right. They need more attention than I do. <laughs> so you can't, you can't, you. If they really interested, then they're gonna come to somebody. But for okay. the most part, for us to really extend our hands, I'm too old to extend my hand to somebody they don't want to accept it. Okay. You know, okay. that's just the way it is. I mean, I, I respect everybody's in their game, but, you know, you just have to be laid back and let them do them. And eventually they don't catch up because them knees get to hurt, them feet get to hurt, and the back get to hurt. And the game that we had started off with, they're going to slow down, break it down, and get smooth. Hmm. Yeah. And so you know, everybody, everybody then chimed in on this. So I'm gonna just bring this. I'm gonna bring this down just for mm-hmm. a second. Oh wait, we, before we go in there, let me just do. I just want to do a little of this, and you talk about and paying, and giving respect and paying, uh, paying homage, right? So, mm-hmm. so let's give a little respect and pay, pay a little homage to this. <laughs> do now is just yeah you still just want to get out there and have mm-hmm. some fun yes you know it was class you know. it was a class act right there yeah you know because we just want to have some fun and it was like mm-hmm. that's how fun was mm-hmm. uh for us back in the day i yeah. love what uh lisa says she says embrace them as we embrace the dance and love yes now i like that yeah now, and so and that's kind of like uh, listen when i saw yeah. some of the young younger ladies and they they really want to learn how to walk and they really want to dance to some of you know to our music mm-hmm. it's the brothers that we got to bring over you know yeah. so uh you know the brothers got to come on over and uh 
Bruce says, uh, speak that. Let's see what else. Oh, yeah, Jocks, how you doing? I had a chance. To hang you up. Up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, you know, so when I talked to Jocks, Jocks said, well, yeah, I know you. You don't know me. And so <laughs> it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure talking with him, you know, and I'll play the cut that he liked, you know, and then, you know, I just sent it to him later on. You know. Right. So to just to show my appreciation, this and Lisa says, they walking, baby. Mm -hmm. And Lisa said, one of my favorites. And yes. Of course, we everybody, Lee, we everybody know that's the 50 yard line, but it was the L <laughs> Matador. Daryl, you should have, Daryl, you should have picked up, even Daryl, you called me up on the phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you called me up on the phone. Giselle, she says, I love it. Yeah. Lori Hubbard. Now, see, now, hey, like, sorry. now that's one. Now, listen, and I get that's away. From, sister. I get away from using that that word. You know, I don't because see, I graduated. I graduated yeah. with a postgraduate degree. I don't want to go to any more schools anymore. So mm -hmm. I would prefer it just to be bopping. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, because that that's like that's like, you know, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be old school. Mm -hmm. and you're on this side. If you're gonna be on new school, you're gonna be on that side. Right. If, when it should be together. Hey, if you all are both facing in opposite directions, you're never gonna see each other. Mm -hmm. So we gotta flip. Mm -hmm. We gotta flip it mm -hmm. and start looking at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gerald says, "Walking at its finest." Yeah. Uh, Tracy Hubbard, I love it. Dimples. Uh, she's hey. in hers. And Giselle. She, okay, she's reaching out. Love it. And so. Hey, Maxine. You see, you see, you see. Okay, I think. Okay. All right, that, that's him. So let's uh let's get him in here. Let's get him in here. Mr. <laughs> Davis, how are you? Hey, hey. Girl. hey. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How you feeling? Miss wonderful, you. wonderful. Glad to see you on the conversation, baby. Yeah, yeah. You started it. You started yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, did did we do did we do enough, Daryl? Is there anything that you like might want to add? You know? Well, y'all doing fine. <laughs> and I want to go ahead and finish it. I just want to say hi because you told me to call. Yes, but sir. But look everybody's perspective is important. Everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. one of the things that Marzette and I did was we opened the doors for the youngsters to come through. Nobody else wanted to deal with them. We did. True that. He telling the truth. We dealt with them youngsters. We handled them too for 10 years, like you say. You know, and so the elders respected what we did because mm. they came out and supported us. Yes. Right. Sir. Yeah. And okay. So so God talk to you, and I'll talk to you later. Love you, Jerry. Love you. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> All right. All right. We got Daryl in there, so that was a good thing. So uh, I got a chance to play with my new toy, right? So I'm getting it. <laughs> so it's like, this is like <laughs> really going. This is really going, this is really going to get, we're going to really move it to the next level. And I'm yeah. certainly yeah. Appreciate appreciative of all the support. Marjette, is there anything that I might have forgot to ask you that you want to share right now? Um, I think we covered everything. Um, I there's not much more to say, but just keep I, this just keep this, this sure? thing going. Hmm? Are you sure? Now go ahead. Now you better say it now, cause you know. Come on now, come on with it. Uh, whoo. Is there something I'm missing? I Maybe I'm, no, I don't know. I do, I need so at, do I need to look at my notes again? Well, shoot, let me see if I wrote anything down. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, man, I'm some talking. I'm gonna talk about some of the great couples because I got to get Tony and James Etta up in here. Oh great yeah. Couples, uh, Bobby yeah. Q. Bobby and uh, uh, Roz. Uh, yeah. Rest in peace. Yes. Yes. And, and oh, I. Right. One of our other postal co workers, we talk about Goldie, Barbara Hayes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, 
Ooh, it's a bunch of people you can get on here. Yeah, they trying. Yeah, Stanley Brown. Who? Stanley Brown. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna call him. You know. Yeah, Stanley. reach out to him. Yeah, well, you already said William Barnett. I know you're gonna have Sam on here. Yeah. You know, uh, it's oh, it's so many people you can have on here. You yeah, get, we're going back in time. Uh, who did I say? Uh, uh, Tyrone Wallace. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't think know if he'll get on, but who I used to love watching him dance. Yes. What you uh, talking about? Him and when him and Mary was dancing. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah. Anybody he danced with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just watching. I just it's a lot of people I used to just love watching. Just yeah. just watch him. Uh VA, Don Vic. Yes, yes. Oh the Donald Fox. Yes. The Fox set. Uh shoot, Pat. Pat was so smooth. <laughs> oh hmm. god, so many. Richard Willis. Yeah. But watch him. Yeah. He reminded me of you put the coat on, you know. Keep the, yeah. the, the, put the coat on. Yeah, it's a lot of people, brother. In -law. Yeah, well, if I well, since I haven't forgotten anybody, then uh, I mean, who is this? Let me see. I'm gonna try this. I hey, this is a spam call, but I'm gonna take a chance on this. See, who in the heck is this? I'm trying <laughs> to say something to you, okay? Let's check it out. Let's see. Hello. Hello, let me tell you something. Let's see, Bontel, more Jefferson again. <laughs> you always know, accept. Fantastic job. I'm sitting here with a smile on my face because it feels good to hear about those times. And a lot of those people are gone. So thank you all for today. I loved it. You welcome. You there, welcome. There and thank is. you for all you showed me. Yeah. So Margaret, I love her. I love you too. Okay. So Leanne has called me. <laughs> okay. I'm you all continue to do the good work you're doing. Hey, yeah. Reggie. Thank God for you, Reggie. Thank God for you. All right. Bring a lot of memories, Reggie. Yeah. Bring a lot of memories. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Thank you so bye much. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> well, there you have it. And yeah. that's, what it's, that's what it's all about for me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, there you have it. And that and, I, and all of this come from a suggestion from our guest on Monday, Mr. Lester Gibbs, to whom... You know, one of my mentors, and that's that's yeah. his brother. And we worked together at the post office. We played uh, together. Oh, you know something? You did say something, Marjette. You got to tell. I I got to hear you talk to me about Reggie Brown. Reggie Brown. <laughs> Reggie Brown was cold. Reggie, Reggie Brown still is cold. Oh, he bop, walked, uh, well, you say step, you got to have, I guess. Reggie Brown, cold, smooth, <laughs> smooth. Him feet be going, he still be smooth and pick his leg up and do, hey, and then come back on a bam. And then, hey. and, and, I yeah. tell, and I tell people, Reggie ain't getting in no contest. Nope, you don't have to. And when that boy that boy turned loose, if he turned loose, he started doing some James Brown on you. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. It is yeah. over. Yeah. That, yeah. That, natural. That some people look at it natural. He's a true natural. Uh, um, Mazet. Mazet was cold. Mazet cold. Mazet yeah. Griffin. Yeah, oh, he, absolutely. You know, yeah, in the temples. Yeah. It's so it's so many people. It's so many people that you gotta just you know. And Casper. I have to say, Casper. Yeah. He flipped from freestyle, and then one day, me and him got to step, and I said, "Well, he done came up, and he done went back in the day and smoothed out, and he got yeah. oh, Casper called now. Casper could, I, could I always. Yeah, dance. he went to a whole nother game when he stepped over. He could always dance. At he, first, he, he was doing always. his thing, making all that money. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. a, it's a bunch of people. Lisa said, yeah. Lisa said, we can't forget about the dress code. Oh, yeah. We had to, you know, we had to dress. Oh, yeah. Well, you missed us earlier. We had the dress code discussion, sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had to look. We waited every, every, the first Sunday. I'm telling you, I had to get my hat. I had a whole three weeks to get my outfit together for that one Sunday. That's just how, how serious this was. 
For me, this was beautiful, my Thank you so much. Everyone. Everyone. Thank, thank you for thank you for your time. Thank you for yes. your patience with me. Thank and just thank you for us sitting down and having this great conversation. Thank you. And I thank um Yvonne for calling in, Yvonne Paramore. Uh who else? Who just called Darryl. you? Daryl call and and Yvonne again. <laughs> yeah, Yvonne and um, William Barnett. I like to thank him for for whatever he's done in the past. Um, a lot of people need to know that he's not just the Rose man. He was the man. Uh, Luther Gage, even though you know, I I I started out oh, yeah. with Luther on his Friday set. Sam Chapman. Uh, ooh. Uh, George Harris was showing me how to walk. He used to be mm -hmm. one of the DJs up at the uh, Copper Box on the first Sunday. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a lot of people that I had. I mean, I just think, and I thank you for even having me on your show. I thank Leanne for consider thinking about me. I love her to the to the most high most, and it just just good people. Um, thank you to all those that just tuned in to check out conversations. Tell somebody. Tell a friend. Because this, this man here is doing good things. Go on, Reggie. Bless your heart. Can't forget about Sweet Judy, the original old timers DJ as well. Okay. She, okay. she passed away, but can't can't forget about her. Listen. What is Jimmy Lee too? Who? Say again. Jimmy Lee. Say Jimmy again. Lee. Jimmy okay. Lee. Yeah. Okay. Muscles. Yeah. 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 Yeah, can't yeah. forget about him. Rest in peace yeah. as well. But he, uh, you know, I know Muscles. I know if he, he, he spun from him, and I knew Muscles more so from being at the President's because that's where all the ball players, that's where we hung out at yeah. uh, on, the, yeah. on, on Friday nights on 75th. Listen, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for the love and thank you for sharing thank your you. journey here on Conversations. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. God bless everybody. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Yeah. <laughs> get the shots. <laughs> so we can get back out and do this thing. Yes, ma'am. So there you have it. That's what we've done today. And it's been a great show. Don't forget on Monday coming up on Conversations, Spinning Benny Harris. You know, Spinning Benny Harris. And I just can't wait to just talk with Benny. We're going to have a good time. My guest today, Miss Margette Coleman, co-worker at the United States Post Office and just an all-around great dancer. I hate that I, I left the set before I got a chance to dance with her. Maybe after when things get right, we'll get a chance to finally step. I can't do Daryl Davis because I only got two turns, but I can do me. Be blessed. Thank you so much, and thanks for listening to Conversations. I'm so glad you could make it. Sit down, sit down. Oh, yeah. Oh, the band is going to be awesome tonight. I dig it. Mm -hmm.